Good evening from New York. I'm Chris Hayes. The Republican Party appears to be preparing to undertake an ideological purge. They're signaling they want to essentially excommunicate from leadership their third ranking member in the House and the only woman in congressional leadership, Congresswoman Liz Cheney of Wyoming. Now, she is on the outs because she has failed to carry the party line on what is increasingly the most important issue inside that party and that movement that Donald Trump actually won the 2020 presidential election. Now, what makes this strange on a number of levels is that this is actually not an ideological question. It is a factual one. And the factual answer is no. Donald Trump did not win the election. He lost the election. And so Republicans are talking about punishing Liz Cheney for the equivalent of saying two plus two equals four or Neil Armstrong walked on the moon in 1969. Today, House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy took direct aim at Congresswoman Cheney. I have heard from members concerned about her ability to carry out the job as conference chair, to carry out the message. We all need to be working as one if we're able to win the majority. Working as one. Well, right now, the Republican Party's binding message is a, a kind of anti-democratic conspiracy theory, an authoritarian delusion. And their leader in the House has no problem saying publicly that all Republicans must abide by it. Privately, he's just waiting for Cheney to be taken out. McCarthy was caught on a hot mic just ahead of his Fox and Friends interview this morning telling Steve Ducey what he really thinks. I think she's got real problems. I, 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 I've had it with, I've had it with, it's, you know, I, I've lost confidence. Well, someone just has to bring a motion, but I assume that would probably take place. We have reached out to Leader McCarthy's office for a comment about that bit of sound you just heard, have gotten not, no response. Political reports that another member of the Republican caucus is already pitching herself to be Liz Cheney's leadership replacement. Congresswoman Elise Stefanik of New York has been calling her colleagues to talk about her interest in the job and garner support. Senator Mitt Romney of Utah is one of Cheney's only defenders in the party. And remember, he just got booed mercilessly by fellow Republicans over the weekend for criticizing Trump. This afternoon, he tweeted, quote, every person's person of conscience draws a line beyond which they will not go. Liz Cheney refuses to lie. As one of my Republican Senate colleagues said to me following my impeachment vote, I wouldn't want to be a member of a group that punished someone for following their conscience. The fact that Congresswoman Cheney refuses to lie is exactly why her own party is very, very mad at her. She has committed no other ideological sin. Liz Cheney is a hard right wing member of Congress. It's not like she woke up and suddenly decided she wants to support the Green New Deal or, God forbid, increasing capital gains taxes on the richest Americans, which next to Donald Trump won the election is probably as sacrosanct a principle as exists in the modern Republican Party. No, 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 none of that. Of course, both parties have lines they will not cross, things they will not brook dissent on. And those change over time. And sometimes they become more or less restrictive, more or less tolerant. The Democratic Party has evolved in such a way that abortion rights and support for Roe v. Wade and access to abortion are now a pretty clear litmus test. It's increasingly harder and increasingly unlikely to be a Democrat who opposes abortion rights. And that's fine, really. I mean, that is just what political parties are. They are factions. They're groups of people that are organized around some shared principles and interests, political commitments. And if you do not buy into those shared principles and political commitments, well, then you go somewhere else. But what we are seeing with Liz Cheney and the party line here harkens back to the origins of that phrase in the Marxist-Leninist left and the ways in which political factions most embodied in Lenin's Bolsheviks, adhered to a principle called democratic centralism. That is, within the party, they could argue within the vanguard of the party behind the scenes. But once a decision was set, once they decided what the party line was, there could be no public dissent. And that principle, that way of operating, grew more and more cultish and insane over time. And it manifested in all sorts of awful and pernicious ways throughout history, culminating in the Stalinist cult of personality, and the reign of terror under Stalin of constant murder and disappearances of people who committed some ideological sin they may not even have understood. On Tuesday, it could be that the party line was two plus two equals five. And on Wednesday, everyone who said it was two plus two equals five was banished to the gulag because now it was two plus two equals seven. Now, clearly, clearly, we are a very, very long way from that. No one's getting thrown into a gulag. Congressman Liz Cheney is probably just... Don't get voted out of leadership. She's still going to be a congresswoman. It's fine. We're not in Stalinist Russia. But 
the tendency that's on display here, the tendency to turn a simple statement of fact of reality, what happened into a political litmus test is unnerving, to say the least. It gets back to the origin of what we mean when we use the word Orwellian. It's an overused adjective, of course, but it was born of George Orwell's real experience, in part fighting both alongside and then against Stalinist factions in the Spanish Civil War. And Orwell, Orwell saw up close these tendencies to deny reality and impose discipline and force people to swear ideological fealty to whatever the whims of leadership were. That's the experience that's chronicled in his Spanish Civil War memoir, Homage to Catalonia. It's the experience that led him to write 1984, An Animal Farm. It is also the tendency that we are seeing on display right now in the modern American Republican Party. I, I, there's no other way to really characterize it. Now, when those tendencies appear on the political left, ideological purges or banishment or public shaming or people being cowed into taking some position, conservatives love nothing more than to whip up a moral panic about it. And indeed, they have whipped up a moral panic about cancel culture recently that they're blasting 24 hours a day. But those same conservatives seem to be about to cancel Congresswoman Liz Cheney because she will, nil, will not lie about the simple factual matter of what happened in November of last year. Hey, thanks for watching our YouTube channel. You should know that you can follow today's top stories and breaking news and catch up on your favorite MSNBC shows all in one place. Download the NBC News app today.